By default, building muscle isn't easy. And unfortunately, most people make it even harder on themselves than it has to be. I mean, walking to most gyms that the majority of people are gonna see training there don't even look like they lift. Now, aside from poor diet, inadequate recovery, and stuff that's happening outside of the gym, the biggest bottleneck to most people's gains is actually what's happening in the gym and in the training session itself. And this is why in this video, I decided to address a couple of critical training mistakes that I see happen pretty much every single week I'm in the gym that is destroying people's results. And I promise you that if you avoid these training mistakes, you're gonna improve your training quality, you're gonna start seeing changes, you're gonna start seeing some amazing results with your physique. So without any further ado, let's dive right into it. The first mistake that I have to address here is using too large of weight increments. I've seen this one happen in North America, in Europe, in Asia, pretty much everywhere. People are routinely ignoring the two and a half pound plate or the 1.25 kilo plate. Seems like the minimum acceptable increment is five kilos on each side or 10 pounds on each side, which means in practice, they're going from 185 up to 205 suddenly or from 80 up to 90 kilos suddenly, which is a huge amount of weight increase to expect your body to adapt to. And usually what ends up happening is the weights will be so heavy that the reps are gonna drop. The form is gonna be very, very sloppy. If they can do any reps with good form, they're using a spotter who also doesn't know what the hell is going on and they're barely getting out of their life. And also they're risking injury in the process of doing that and getting stuck in a plateau. So instead of ending up in this situation, what I recommend is using each available increment as an opportunity to set up a new baseline. What this means is that once you can get 185, let's say for 10 solid clean reps with good form, go up to 190 and build that up to 10 reps with solid good form. And then when you get there with 10, go up to 195, build that up and then move on to 200 and eventually get up to 205. And that's really where you've earned it because you've maintained good form, you've maintained a good standard of training quality before you then got up to 205 and you're gonna start seeing some great gains doing that. And the more advanced you get, the two and a half pound plate will also be very heavy for you to add. And at some point it will only be extra reps or potentially using fractional plates, which I'm a really big fan of. So these are plates that are around a pound, half a kilo, even less than that. And I use these not only for my barbell lifts, but I also use them for cable machines because some cable machines have really large increments in between. So I need to bridge the gap. So for example, if my cable machine is going from 10 to 15 and I'm doing a lateral raise, that can seriously impact the number of reps I can get. So I can use my fractional plates and pin them into the cable machine and then bridge that gap in between until I can adapt to potentially use that 15 on that particular machine. So you really wanna be playing the smart game. There's no room for ego here. Maintain the training quality as you keep adding weight and you will see some amazing progress by doing this. The second mistake that I also see a lot is people messing up their exercise order. It's not uncommon to see a guy just walk up in the gym and start banging out sets of dumbbell curls, hammer curls, skull crushers, tricep extensions, and then later they do their bench press, their dips, their rows, their chin-ups, not realizing that they just exhausted their arms and now that became a limit factor in those compound lifts and they are not getting the right amount of stimulation for their chest and their back. And so if you're someone who is doing this, do make sure to complete your compound lifts first and then do your isolations. And a pro tip here, if you wanna bring up your arms, you can place extra sets of arms at the beginning or at the end of your leg day. And this is where you can complete those sets with good, high quality, solid form with minimal interference and you're gonna see some extra growth for that lagging body part. Now, the third mistake that I see pretty much every single time I walk into the gym is someone slacking off on their warm up. They are either gonna skip it entirely, going straight from the locker room to the working weight, or they're gonna dabble around, try to speed through it and not take it as seriously. Even worse, they're not gonna hit the like button, which is a mistake that you can definitely avoid, so make sure to do that. And with the warm up, my recommendation is to treat every rep with respect. Even if it's a five pound dumbbell that you're using or an empty barbell that you're starting off with, this is your chance to focus Take it seriously, take advantage of the warm up to get yourself mentally in the zone. And most importantly, getting your body ready to perform, especially if you're someone who's been sitting down for seven, eight, nine hours, your body's tight, you're going from the chair to the car, then from the car to the gym directly. You wanna make sure you mobilize your hips, get your knees ready, get your shoulders ready, get your elbows ready 
to perform at a high level. And then on top of that, it's about mentally getting ready because sometimes after such a long work day, you're physically in the gym, but you're mentally still at work. This is not a good place to be in because you're gonna perform movements that can be potentially risky. So if you're distracted, you're not gonna be able to do a good job and stay safe. So by warming up, getting present through the moment, not only are you gonna stay safer in the gym, but you're gonna see better performance and you're gonna really have the most productive workout sessions. Mistake number four and one that a lot of people still make is not resting enough between sets. And this one is very obvious when you see someone perform a compound lift like the squat and they get 10 reps in the first set and then in the second set they can barely get four or five reps. And those four or five reps are also done in a fatigued state when they're also not safe and the form has broken down because they're not resting enough. So they're forced to get the weight off and they just simply can't perform as much higher quality work. And I remember when I first started out, the common recommendation for rest between sets was 60 to 90 seconds if you wanna maximize muscle growth. Now we know that not to be true and that there's a big benefit to resting more between sets. So for your compound list, you'd be resting about two and a half to three minutes, that's my recommendation. So for your bench presses, leg press, squats and deadlifts and for your isolation movements such as your bicep curls your tricep extensions you'd be resting about 60 to 90 seconds now if you're someone who has to reduce the total workout time and you have no other option because you're really busy like most of my clients entrepreneurs and professionals you can use intelligent strategies to do that so for example with your isolation movements you can then use supersets where you do a tricep extension then a bicep curl then go back to a tricep extension with minimal rest in between and that's going to save you some time and in this case with compound lifts I would definitely recommend doing some swaps if you're doing movements that are riskier to do in a fatigued state. So I would recommend, for example, swapping the bent over barbell row with a chest supported row so you're not training your lower back in a fatigued state. And another example would be swapping the squat for the leg press, which you can do safer in a more fatigued state. And this is if you really have to do this. My general recommendation is to definitely take longer periods of rest, especially between your compound lifts to really maximize your gains. Mistake number five, never doing any form checks. Even if you think you know what you're doing, even if you're 100% confident in your ability to lift correctly, I still highly recommend that you get out of your comfort zone and film yourself lifting once in a while so you can double check your form. As a coach, I do this with clients all the time. And even those clients who've been lifting for five to 10 years seriously are often shocked when they get through their first round of form checks and they see how they look while they're lifting weights. And if you've never done this, I guarantee that you're gonna find some obvious technique mistakes that are gonna force you to deload the weight and fix your form. Don't let your ego take over. Ensure you're doing your lifts with proper form, whether you're giving yourself feedback based on the videos or getting a coach to analyze those videos, if you improve your form, I promise you're gonna start seeing way better results. And the other thing that's gonna help you see better results is making sure you hit that subscribe button below, enable notifications by hitting the bell icon. Details for coaching if you wanna work with me are in the description below. I'm also gonna leave a video here at the end that's gonna help you build muscle faster. So check out that video and I'm going to see you right there.